study. Steve here, and again we're going to talk about God and His Word. As we go through life and we go through our growth period, our maturity in the Lord, we start off as babes in Christ, and really it starts out with the milk of God's Word. Uh, usually that entails something like just hearing the gospel, hearing that all have sinned and, and fallen short of the glory of God, and seeing how we have sinned or transgressed the law. We broke God's law uh, against Almighty God. And with that debt, that handwriting of ordinances, the debt that is against us of breaking that law, that record, uh, we're guilty, and there's a fine, and there's a punishment, and we don't have anything that we can pay to make that debt right. And unfortunately, what we end up with is, is going to prison. And in this case, as just before the judge drops the, the gavel down and says, you know, hey, you're going to prison for X amount of years because of the transgression, uh, the law that you broke, and there's a punishment, and uh, the judge will say, you know, I have to hand this down. And we might be saying, well, wait a second, I'm, I'm a good person. I'm the type of person who, you know, I go to church, I, I, I believe, Judge, that you're, that you're good and, and uh, you'll give me a second chance and that, uh, you know, uh, you're, you're, you're loving and, and all these things and that uh, look at all these other good things that I've done in my life. And the judge will respond back and, and say, you know, well, wait a second, I am good and I am loving, but uh, at the same time, I'm also a righteous judge and so I have to because I'm loving and good and righteous, I have to fulfill the requirements of the law and the position that I have. I cannot make this, this debt that you have go away, this transgression of the law go away. You're guilty, and the law says that you must be punished. At that time, I'm thinking I'm going to be going to jail, and until and somebody stands up who I don't even know, who said, I have given up my life, everything that I have, to pay off your debt. And with that, it's like, you know, otherwise I'd be going to jail, I'd be going to prison. And so, for some of us, when we hear this gospel message that the Messiah came to take away our sin, and that if we repent and we recognize the wickedness in our, in our lives and in our flesh, then we, we lay everything down, because it's not of any works that, that I should boast, but it's, I am worth less. But even though I am worthless in the eyes of God and the judge, the judge's son stood up and says, I will pay that fine. I will take the punishment, the fine, the penalty, the whole nine yards, and I will give you freedom and liberty, and it's grace through faith. And unfortunately, a lot of people, a lot of believers don't even know that. That is the milk of God's word. And, and I know believers that have, have gone to the point of where they have never heard uh, the gospel message. They've never heard the, the whole reason of why the Messiah came and died on the cross and why he took his, uh, our sins upon himself to be that sacrifice, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And unfortunately, though, that's about as, as meaty as some people get in their Christian walk as they go to churches and learn from pastors who have been to Bible colleges and seminaries, and they think, well, as long as I, I well, I must be saved, I must be a believer. But yet in their lifestyles, what we end up seeing is something very different. We see that uh, they still engage in sin over and over again. And we know that this doesn't please the Father. And it frustrates the believer because, you know, they've been taught, well, all your sins have been done away with. And if you do sin, it's okay because Jesus died on the cross for all your sins. But yet we continue reveling in these sins or continuing the cycle of a pattern, a lifestyle, where we continue in certain sins. And there is no victory. There is no life because we know that sin uh, brings forth death when it's full grown. So many believers will go to their pastors and say, hey, I'm having problems with this or that or whatever it is in their lives. And the pastors are like, I can't answer that. Because a lot of times those pastors are having those same problems themselves. So what we're looking at is really uh, you come upon the place where it's, we see in God's word that there's blessings for obedience to his word and there's life. And, and we see in scripture where it says, you know, that God says, if you do my commandments, my charge, and, and obey my voice and these things, that it'll go well with you and your children. You'll be blessed as you go in and blessed as you go out. But unfortunately, a lot of us today in American Christianity think, oh, that's legalism if you're being obedient. The question is, am I being legalistic if I do not steal? The commandment says, thou shalt not steal. 
So am I being legalistic of knowing that if I obey that commandment from a loving heart because he, he first loved me, and I'm saved by grace through faith, he has made me a new creature in Christ, and now the question is, should I continue in sin, or should I examine myself in the light of God and his word? And if I come across things, uh, little rooms of darkness within my heart, do I turn over that to God and submit and repent and ask for his forgiveness, and to replace that disobedience, that transgression of his law, which is sin, that brings death? And then, do I walk as he walks? and walk in life and blessing, or do I thumb my nose at God and His Word? It's interesting because when this happens, a lot of people will ask the question, I'm going to refer to some notes here, it says, why do you obey? Is it because God, uh, what God will do to you if you don't? Now, these are some questions that we get in referencing when we talk about obeying God's commandments today, as seen in the Scripture. If we remember, we are either walking as the Messiah walked in righteousness by obeying His commandments, the Father's commandments, or we disobey to choose sin, which is transgression of God's commandments. It's interesting because most believers agree with this, but when you start mentioning things like the Sabbath, the Lord's Sabbath, or the Feasts of the Lord, or His dietary instructions that we see in the first five books of the Bible, all of a sudden, uh, people get combative and they get confused and they'll often, you know, I've been attacked numerous times because of this. This is usually when the questions rise up and say, well, why do you obey? And is it because God's going to squish you under his thumb if you don't? Well, here's a simple story to illustrate the point of why we obey. Two young boys were walking down an old city street and there was an old warehouse with lots of glass windows. One boy said to the other, hey, let's get some rocks and break those windows. That'll be fun. The other boy said, nah, I don't think that's a good idea. To this, the first boy mocked him and said, why? Is it because of what your father will do to you? The boy looked into the eyes of the other and said, no, I don't want to because of what it would do to my father. You see, having faith and obeying the commandments of God is not an either-or situation. Nor is it because we think the Father will punish us. Rather, it's what it would do to him. How would the Father feel if his child broke the law? It would break his heart that one of his children would do such a thing. You ever seen a, re a rebellious teenager, or were you even one in the past? Remember how much of a strain on the relationship it had with the Father when you brought this about within the family? The same rebelliousness is seen throughout the scriptures where his children rebelled and soon engaged and continued in sin. It breaks the Father's heart and it distances our relationship with him and it affects those around us. Another reason we obey is that we are new creatures in Christ who have been saved from sin and death. Now, we are to walk as the Messiah walked and to do God's good works. This is how we can be holy as he is holy. God does not sin, and nobody who sins can even see his face because they'll die. Being set apart from the world of wickedness and not chasing after the evil deeds of the flesh. Now let's consider these scriptures. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh. And we know that the flesh goes after sin, which is transgressing God's commandments. And the Spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of God. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1. So as many believers who are saved by grace through faith, we are not supposed to engage in continue in sin to be set apart from the world, to be holy and walk in reverence of Him in His Word. So when we continue to feed the flesh, what does that result in? For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And this is Galatians Chapter 6, verse 8. Now this is clear to see, but what does everlasting life, how does that work in regards to obeying God's commandments? Let's look at the scriptures to find out. But now having been, been set free from sin, or the breaking of God's commandments, and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness, and to the end, everlasting life. Romans 6, verse 22. So if we do not sin but obey the commandments of God, there is everlasting life, as the Messiah promised. Still not convinced? Let's turn to the book of Matthew and look at the words of Jesus himself. So he said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one, 
That is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. Matthew 19, verse 17. Now, many believers tend to think Jesus came to do away with God's law and his commandments. However, Jesus never told his disciples or the people or the Pharisees that God's commandments have been done away with. Matter of fact, there are scriptures that talk about it. He says, I haven't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. Fulfill doesn't mean to do away, but to fill up and to be overflowing. In other passages of scripture, that word fulfilled is the Greek word pleru, which means uh, that has been translated in other passages, having fully preached the gospel of Christ, as Paul said. So if we use the, the translation of fully preached, then Jesus said, you know, I haven't come to abolish the law, but to fully preach God's commandments, God's law, so that they, they won't be tinkered with, they won't be ignored, but you'd be able to walk in that liberty and that freedom from sin. So it's really interesting how, again, Jesus never told anybody that the commandments would be do, done away with. Matter of fact, Jesus even told his disciples and said, you know, whatever the Pharisees teach from the seed of Moses, and the only thing that they, the Pharisees could teach from the seed of Moses was the Bible itself. It wasn't their own interpretation of their, their man-made laws or doctrines or traditions that they came up with. It was only pure scripture. And Jesus said, obey what they tell you to do, just don't do what they do. Because what they do is in disobedience to God and his word. So anyway, this is again proven in the New Testament by Paul saying, circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing. But keeping the commandments of God is what matters. As a believer in Jesus who's had his sins forgiven by the Father, by the Lamb of God and what he did on that cross and the resurrection and him being brought back to life, uh, 1 Corinthians 7.19, that's what it's all about. Once we are saved, we are saved from the God's wrath of committing and continuing in sin. Now as a new creature in Christ, we're supposed to not continue in sin, but live in that liberty and freedom that God gave. Let's continue on. Now this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked the Messiah. Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you have heard from the beginning, which we see in the first five books of the Bible. The old commandment is a word which you heard from the beginning. And this comes from 1 John chapter 2, verses 3-7. through 7. Again, we also see this in 2 John uh, chapter 1, verse 6, which says, This is love that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. So we should walk in obedience to God in his word, his commandments, his statutes, his principles, and the things that he set up as an everlasting or perpetual commandment. Uh, it's interesting because what we come out with is that we are to have faith and keep the commandments of God from a loving heart. Again, it's not an either-or type of situation. These commandments are from the beginning and they're found again in the first five books of the Bible. Now, as believers today, we see, as Paul says, that we are to be doers of the word and that results in everlasting life. Now let's fast forward to the book of Revelation because here's where it gets it's interesting because we are indeed in the end times. And we'll see if this is true. Blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. Now this comes from Revelation 22 verse 14. And this is huge because we are saved from sin or breaking God's commandments, which brings about death. We see in the scripture it says, in sin, as it, as it grows and matures, it brings forth death. Um, to a life where we are to obey and walk in freedom and liberty from sin when we walk in obedience. This results in being given the right to the tree of life. Now many may say, I've never seen these scriptures before. And that's because most pastors aren't fully taught what is in scripture. Uh, many are taught the traditions and doctrines of men that do away with an obedient lifestyle to God, just as the Messiah did. So how can we be the light of the world if we continue in sin? Simply, we cannot. 
So when someone asks, why do we obey? It's because it would grieve the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to not do so, if we didn't do so. We also obey because we are new creatures in Christ, whose nature has been changed from doing the things that displease the Father, walking in sin and disobedience, to now do the things that please Him. Consider the scripture. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the name of uh, in the Lord Jesus, that you should abound more and more, just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, and not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God that no one should take advantage of or defraud his brother in that matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanliness, but to holiness. Therefore he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. And this comes from 1 Thessalonians 4, uh, verses 1 through 8. Sanctification is a process of where we grow and we don't continue in sin, but strive to walk in obedience. Remember, remember Paul said to run the race to win. I beat my body to make it a slave to righteousness. It's really interesting. Something that so many are in short supply today uh, is that life and blessing because they continue in sin. The life is knowing the one who saved us and blessed us in all we do. Ultimately, we will, he will return and make all things right after that day of judgment. To those that continue in sin and are lawless, living their lives as if God did not give any commandments to obey, it will not be a good time. Remember, our actions are our fruit, and God's word equates obedience to life and disobedience as lawlessness. Now, let's take a look at what Jesus said in Matthew 7, 21-23. He gives us a warning for those who might have gotten off that narrow path of, of salvation. It's not that we obey God's commandments to earn our salvation. It's because we are saved and He's given us a new nature that we get to obey those commandments and please the Father. Here's what Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father, not sinning, will be in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, and cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Again, this comes from Matthew 7, verses 21 to 23. This warning from the Messiah himself should give us pause, that we should examine our lives to see if we are indeed walking as he walked. If we do, then at the end of the age, we will not only have the right to the tree of life, but the Messiah himself will say, His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. And this is Matthew 25, verse 23. So, it's interesting that we shouldn't be obedient to God because we think He's going he's to crush us and, and be an, uh, an evil, hard judge. But rather, we see His commandments as being uh, the commands and the instructions of a loving Father who doesn't want us to engage in the sin, the lawlessness, the wickedness of the world. Because that will strain the relationship that we have with Him. The whole reason that same sin came into the world is because we were tempted by our own desires and we chose our desires over the desires of the Father. And again, Paul writes in Scripture many times where he talks about, you're going to be a slave to the one whom you obey. You're either going to be slaves to wickedness or you're going to be a slave to righteousness. And it's interesting because God's Word also talks about that we are adopted, we are grafted into Israel. We are part of the family of God. And He has given us His name. So as His family, under His name, one of His children... We get an inheritance. Now, do we act in rebelliousness and sin to that inheritance or to that, 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 that life and the forgiveness that God gave us? No. We should walk and be holy as He is holy. Now, does that mean that we're perfect? No. Many of us, including myself, have a long way to go. But we continue to strive to study and search and pray to God and to walk as the Messiah walked. 
you know, it's funny because when I start bringing out these things about being obedient to God from a loving heart because I love, I love the Father, the same as my daughter loves me and she obeys the instructions that I gave her, then it makes sense. But for some reason, many believers think that obeying God is legalism. Well, if we're supposed to walk as the Messiah walked, and in Him there was no sin, He walked in obedience. So He set the example of how we're supposed to walk. Now the thing is, is that we are saved by grace, and grace is that safety net that if we do choose to sin, and we, we're still trying to overcome, have Him overcome the flesh in our lives, and sometimes that's a trial, and it's going to take a lot of work on God's part in our lives to get rid of that flesh if we submit and humble ourselves and repent. It might take a while. But through that sanctification or that maturity process, we see that the things of this world and in our flesh is not worth dying for. But rather what we see is that the relationship that we have with the Father, that's worth living for. And that's worth being obedient to continue in keeping that relationship close. So it's something to think about. So anyway, that's going to be it for today. Remember, take care, God bless. Read your words, study and pray, and walk as he walks.